Information Overload, how to dissect and use what applies to you. Episode 875. This is Golf Smarter. People ask me regularly, aren't you overwhelmed with the amount of information that you have? And it's like, absolutely. I'm, I'm definitely on inf information overload a lot. And so I just try to find a nugget or two on any conversation that I have. Um, but with all that advice that's coming in and you're saying, let me figure out what's relevant, what applies to you, which I think is amazing and phenomenal. How do you assess all that information without being judgmental? You know what I'm asking? Does that uh, make sense? It's not even a matter of being judgmental. It's like your body works this way or it doesn't, right? And yes, with some training, you might be able to add some flexibility or add some strength. But the bottom line is, you're born a certain, or you you you've grown to a certain height. You have a certain wingspan. Your bone structure is a certain a, a certain length. Um, your uh, um, your grip naturally goes on the on the club in different ways. So I always I always make sure that their hands are on there the way they're designed to be on there. I don't like the terms weak and strong grips. Strong connotes something that's good. Weak connotes something that's wrong. Um, that would mean that Ben Hogan and Roy McElroy's right hand grip is, which is weak in our vernacular, is actually uh, not a not a good thing or not a strong thing. Would actually biomechanically, it's extremely strong for them. Oh. So everybody, everybody's different. I remember going to when I first started getting into the golf instruction business in the early '90s. Back then, we were we were looking at uh, at uh, I was looking at. Uh, PJ Coaching and Teaching Summit videotapes of past speakers and um, looking at all these amazing instructors and there were some panels that, that were on there and I watched this one panel and it was the, the the interview was asking each one of these top teachers what's the most important thing in the golf swing or what's the most important thing in instruction and the first teacher said it's the grip and I'm kind of rolling my eyes like hey, you know it's the grip come on that's not that's not as sexy as pressure shift or weight transfer or swing plane or wrist angles and all that kind of stuff we like to talk about. Like if your hands are not on there the way they're supposed to be for you to hit the ball solidly and straight, then the rest of your swing is it, it is a compensation for something that you didn't do correctly to begin with. And we all like to see beautiful Adam Scott type swings where they're right on plane. But Jim Furyk's swing has been just, just as successful because biomechanically it's exactly the way it needs to be for him. If you measured him, that's how he's designed to swing. I had a student the other day, I won't mention his name, but a nice high school student. You would look at this swing and you would say, Matt Wolf's swing looks average, looks technically perfect compared to this kid was so outside Flying elbow wasn't even a strong enough term. The elbow was just way up to the sky. Made Jack Nicholas's elbow look like he was tucking it. A uh, massive plane change coming down with a lot of external shoulder rotation. And when he finished his swing, his feet were a foot further back away from the ball than when they started. And he smashed the hell out of it dead straight. And he's seen my Instagram videos and talking about how I measure people um, through the Mike Adams system. And and he's like, this, you're the only instructor in this area that I can trust because you're not going to try to make my swing look on plane, you know, fundamentally neutral, neutral grip. Uh, and I'm like, you know what you are, when I measured you, you came out to exactly the way you swing the golf club and please don't let anybody change you. I tweaked one little thing in his grip to make his club face be correct, but everything else I'm like, now just absolutely let it rip. Give me all you can. Do not try to hold anything back. And the harder he swung, the farther and straighter he hit it. And it was exactly how he was designed. You would never look at this at this swing and say that is a way to swing a golf club. And it was it was. I mean, it's been one of my favorite lessons. Um, I saw him about a month ago, and it was like I, I had to save his swing on my phone. So I'm like, I just chuckle every time I see it because it's exactly the way he's designed to swing. And then there'll be somebody else who comes to me, and they they measure out as being somebody very neutral and it, it'll look like a, like a, uh, a, an Adam Scott looking beautiful on plane, you know, that kind of a, the, the things we'd like to look at cause they're aesthetically pleasing. Right? Um, I think what's aesthetically pleasing 
is a ball that's hit solidly with the correct trajectory and the curve that you predicted to happen before you hit the ball. That to me is beautiful. And how that happens is different for everybody. How you grip it is going to be different for everybody. How much stance width you have, what your foot flare is going to be. Um, if your swing is going to be more upright or flatter, it depends on how you're designed. If you've got shorter arms, you're going to have a flatter swing. If you have longer arms, you're going to have a more upright swing. If you have longer arms, you're going to have to stand taller because that's how the geometry works. So your posture is going to look like you're barely bent over. Somebody with short arms is going to need to bend over quite a bit. They're going to swing around their body. They need to bend over to be able to hit that ball. So everybody looks different, but all the great players and the great player, when I say great players, somebody who has played really good golf for a sustained period of time. And I find that those players either were matched, well, I would say either figured it out almost on their own with maybe a little bit of help from a pro, um, but were headstrong enough not to change when somebody wanted to make their swing look different because that was their model, right? It's the Jim Furyk. I, I had, a, I don't know if I've been told you the story before, but I was um, at a conference and there was a guy who was a teacher there who played on the same team at Arizona with Jim Furyk. And, and he was like the number six or seven player, so he wasn't traveling. He was kind of frustrated. But when Jim got there, um, somebody told Jim, well, you got to change your golf swing because you can't play college golf with that swing. And he started trying to change it and couldn't break 80. And so this other guy got to go traveling because he was like the number five or six guy got to move up a spot. And then the minute Jim said, to hell with this, I'm going back to what I, you know, how I won all those junior golf tournaments, back to the swing that's made him into a Hall of Famer and a major championship winner. He said he wouldn't shoot over 70 after that. A bad <laughs> round might have been a 72. But he was shooting somewhere between 65 and 70 because he was doing what he's designed to do. So if you get measured, which happens with every one of my students, whether you're online or, or in person, um, I measure you before, um, you will know what your, blue, what your blueprint is. And if you know right. what your blueprint is and you stick to it, then you can ignore all the other noise out there, all this other information, which may be good for somebody, but not for you. Now you can make golf super simple. Now you go to a sports psychologist like, well, how do you play your best golf? Well, I, I don't think too much. Well, they're like, oh my God, well, you it's like, it's like the, the story of Fred Couples when he went up to uh, Dr. Bob Rotella and asked him, you know, all my friends are seeing you, should I see you? And and he goes, I don't know, Freddie, what uh, what do you think about when you hit an eight iron? And he goes, well, I just think about the best eight iron. Goes, well, you don't need me. <laughs> it's, uh, it's like, if you're doing what you're supposed to do, because you, we, you know, I, I think I did a video the other day where I said, I'm a, I'm a, uh, I'm a puzzle solver. I figure out what your pieces need to be and I can put you together in the way that you're designed to do it. Right. So, so then you can keep it that simple. And all of a sudden your, your mind can be quieter. So psychologically you're in a, in a state of peacefulness. I think, uh, you had, uh, uh, you are, you are, uh, one of your interviews with, was with a, um, a neuroscientist who wrote that book, Jira Golf, right? And he said, quiet, a quiet Justice. mind is how we perform our best. Well, if you're trying to manage your swing because you're not doing what you're biomechanically designed to do, then you got a whole bunch of noise in your brain. And it's hard to be in a state of flow or zone type state, as we like to say, because you're sit you're seriously, you're managing yourself through an entire golf swing and you're you're grinding so hard to make this thing work that's not really designed for you. Because ultimately what you want to be able to do is get up there and rip it and not worry about it but you have to be in the position before you do that. That's why that guy on that panel who said, you've got to have the right grip for you. I don't know if he said that, but grip is the most important thing. Yes, the right grip for you is the most important thing. And right. if you do that, it sets up so many things. Just the just the trail hand grip affects the club face, the path, the attack angle, the linkage of how your arm matches your body and the direction of how your wrist hinges. So if that's off, that's already five things that are going to be messed up in your swing that you have to manage. Try doing that with a quiet mind. That is not going to work. Let's, we're going to take another time out. I'll be yeah. back. I'm sorry. Yeah, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I'll be back right after this. Mm -hmm. 
I need to get back to this young phenom. <laughs> I have questions about this kid. Is yeah. that I, I'm so fascinated. It's like when you when he took his first swing, yeah. and he was going through the swing, and your eyes are like, your eyebrows are going up, and you're like, oh boy. And then he made contact, and the ball just exploded out. Do you need to like take a step back and go, wait, do that again? <laughs> Let me. Well, how many what? times did he take? Did he have to swing for you to like? Oh, oh my God, this is legit. It didn't surprise me because I measured him, and I'm like, nah. this is what should happen. Now, if it was a bit surprising that he actually did that, because I figured that he would probably be doing something that he, you know, looked at, you know, like a beautiful quote-unquote beautiful backswing that yeah. we're trying to feel like, like look at Tiger's back. So, well, Tiger measures out to be pretty close to neutral in a lot of things, so it's still looks very neutral. Um, I got another another story about about Tiger that we can talk about. Um, maybe we already yeah. have the show, but... But, um, you know, listen, I I don't care if you repeat stories because I actually think you've told that Furyk story before, but I love it, and there's yeah. people who haven't heard yeah. it before, and so, so, this is all good. So Please. when I measured him... One of the measurements we do is called the trail hand grip measurement. And um, when he did that and I assessed it, I'm like, no, seriously, do it the way I asked you to do it. He goes, he does it again. And, and he did it a certain way, which was like pretty extreme. I'm like, wow, so you are a big time, what I call it, uh, and Mike Adams is going to cover a golfer. And so I'm like, so that's somebody who, when they take the club back, is going to have their elbow way out like this instead of tucking it like this and holding the tray like we've talked about before, right? Mm -hmm. His elbow's going to be like that. So you can imagine where the club's going to be. Pointing, I mean, elbow way up here, club way over there. And I'm like, well, this is cool. Let me measure how much your uh, your shoulder externally rotates. And he's got a lot of external shoulder rotation, so that's going to shallow the shaft. I'm like, okay, let me see this. And it did exactly what it was supposed to do. And I'm like, cool. Now your balls are going a little bit to the right. I need to strengthen your left hand grip to match up your club face. But now just go ahead and do it. And literally, it's one of those lessons where think about how much work for a golf instructor to take somebody's biomechanically that way and try to make them into a neutral swing. They're going to be doing some serious, what my old mentor Jim Hardy says, some serious physical therapy throughout the, throughout the entire swing. That is a hard golf lesson. This one was one of the easiest golf lessons I ever gave. I strengthened the left hand grip a little bit, and the harder he swung, the farther and straighter he hit it. Amazing! Like now, now it now it's like there's no, there's there's all this freedom. There's no there's no, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? There's no managing. There's no you know uh, resistance. Trying. Yeah, they're just like it's 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 freeing it up. It's letting it go. They're they're. they're you don't have to block anything. You don't have to restrict. Unrestricted is probably the best word I can say. You don't have to restrict your swing anymore because there's nothing restricted. You can let it go. The club face is going to come right back to square. And guess what? You want to hit harder? We get faster. It's just going to go farther. It's not going to go any more offline because the, everything's matched up. So you get to you get to go full green light, let her rip, and it's super fun. So if it didn't, the answer was. What surprised me wasn't what his swing looked like, because that's how he was designed. What surprised me is that he didn't try to do something different, and he actually said, hey, this is me. And that takes a lot in a world of seeing all these pretty pictures to say, hey, it's okay to swing it like this. And I don't have to change who I am because this is how I'm designed. And man, that's... And he's a young kid. He's only like 14 or 15, so... Wow. Uh, it's, it's, I think, I think that's why, that's why I think some of the best players are some of the most headstrong players because they have figured out a way they hit it well. Right. And I, I can't, I can't count myself among them because I was a rule follower. So when somebody told me to do something, who was an authority figure, a coach, like, okay, I'm going to do this because, Hey, you're the expert. I'm going to do it. And I've been like that my, my whole life. But some of the best players are the ones who say, Hey, I don't hit it well when I do it that way. So I'm not going to let you mess with my, with my motion here. I'm going to do it because I do it this way, right? And and so that that's the kind of player. And I, I kind of I don't mind when people question what I what I teach. I want you to question what I teach, but I'll prove it to you that this is how you're designed to do it. And then when you, oftentimes this is something we hear a lot. Boy, that's how I did it when I played my best. But that's not what the textbook said, or that's not what this person who was the latest Instagram sensation was talking about, right? 
Um, and that's what I'm talking about, all this information out there. It's like, okay, well, this is the hot teacher right now. Let me do what, you know, and, and, and this is his student. So let me try to do, you know, what that player does. And, and then all of a sudden you're going down this road and you know how hard it is. I mean, this game's hard. So we're making it really hard by trying to do something where you're not designed to do. So fire the questions at me. I will answer them to you in a way where you'll understand. It's like, oh, this makes sense. My tagline in my golf instruction is simple, logical instruction because it's simple because it's you and it's logical because when you do what you're designed to do, you can be successful. When you try to do something that somebody else is designed to do, that's when you have to restrict, manage, block, analyze, you know, uh, high maintenance would be a word. Um, that, have you interviewed Bruce Rierig already um, in another podcast, a putting coach? He should be on your list of people. He's a fantastic putting instructor. Um, and one of the things we do, we do, we co-coach people. I just have them on FaceTime and, uh, and we do, we do some, uh, some lessons together and, um, you know, we measure everybody before they, before they putt. So we know exactly how they're designed to putt. It's the same thing. I mean, putting is not a hard motion if you know how you're designed, but it's super hard. I'll give you a quick example. So my right hand turns out to need to be in a weak position, kind of like Rory's or Ben Hogan. That's how my, we call it a side cover grip. I always used to pull my putts. Well, what was, a, what was my, my grip? Well, I put my right hand on the side like where my palm faces the target. Well, the minute my arm, my hand goes to where it wants to be, which is more turned to my left, that's what's going to happen during the stroke. And I would pull all of my, of my you know, short putts that I was trying to make for par. And the minute I turned my hand in the correct position, that pull went away. I, I, I didn't have to manipulate the stroke. I mean, I even did a video years ago where I said, hey, you know what? To stop the pull, lead with your left elbow. And, and, and literally, it was a block. I was teaching a block because I was trying to get myself to stop hitting it left. And that was a great compensation. Now, I don't have to compensate for that anymore because I'm already biomechanically sound before I start. So I was going to tell you the tiger story. Do you want to do a break or do you want to, can I just keep golfing? Oh, no way. I, I, uh, first, let me say, yes, Bruce Rerick has been on the show, and I think you introduced me to him. Uh, that was Arnold Palmer's playing partner for yes. years. Correct. Yes. Amazing yes. storyteller. Great storyteller, but even better coach, better putty coach. I mean, the yes. guy, phenomenal. We, it is so funny. Like At the end of every putting lesson, I say, Bruce, you did it again. This person was, keeps making 10 footers like, like they were one footers. It's just, it's amazing. But all we're doing is we're getting people to do what they're designed to do, whether Bruce is doing it in putting or I'm doing it in the full swing. It's just, we're just making you, you. And if you're you, you can be consistent. Let me Great. just say that Bruce Rurick was on episode 804, definitely worth going back and listening to. And that was from August 3rd, 2021.